We're gonna be doing a lot of wrenching under this hood, so I think what I'm actually gonna do is just go ahead and delete on it for now. Hood off. I guess it's time to dig into the ignition here. This is way before lightning hoses. Just a little strip of metal here. Guy could use some barbed wire if he's in a pinch or whatever you need, as long as it conducts electricity. It looks like we're gonna need a coil wire. Oh, the good news is that's been full of water. Points are severely corroded. The timing and throttle controls are actually on the column. And each click, you can add timing, pull on hills, stuff like that. Otherwise, fuel efficiency, performance, you can throw some timing in this thing and scoot around a little bit. I think I'm gonna pull the sparkulators out. That was brand new. Hmm. It's like straight 30 weight. Does have quite a bit of viscosity though. So I think we're safe to run it for at least a couple minutes. So I'm just gonna take off this aftermarket heater here. Dig it into the ignition system here. I'm gonna go ahead and just replace everything. Distributor cap, rotor, all the connections, the wire, even the switch. We're gonna go ahead and put a new key in this thing. It's just one of those things we gotta get done. Yeah. It smells like vinegar. That's kind of nice. I wonder what Reba McIntyre is doing. To her, hopefully. I wonder if I could just bend this. So it's time to actually time the engine here. We need to get this on top dead center before we go any farther. And the Ford here has a really neat feature. It's a built-in timing pin, this little guy right here. And this is a spare gear I brought with just in case. You can see this little dimple or depression here, I guess it would be. As the engine rotates around, the pin's gonna fall into that, and that's gonna signal that we're at top dead center. And then we just pull this out, pop it back in again. Really simple. So we're gonna need fuel, obviously. Dennis, the guy around here that works on the T's and some of the other cars says, I got something for you. Nice little jug here, NHRA clamps. We definitely need clean fuel though, and this is gonna do it for now. Still not, that's not looking there yet. I just wanna hear this run, then we'll go through that nightmare. So before we jam some fire maker down into the fuel, make it happen here, I'm gonna go ahead, snag it off, crack it open, and just make sure that, well, fuel can happen. And it is in fact rebuilt. A Little bit of juice in there, that's doing the thing. Gasket's in great condition, all new hardware. So I'll put this back together and get it on. Neutralis. Nothing. So this starter solenoid, which by the way is not the original solenoid, has failed. No go. The good news is I know how to jump start this. So let's, let's go right to gone in 60 seconds mode. I'm suspecting no spark. No, that is sparking. Well, we just gotta try to find the right combination of fuel, throttle, and choke here. And it's gonna take a little bit of, you know, I don't know, guessing. Pouring fuel. It's getting fuel, no doubt about that. Give it a little bit of nitrous oxide. Terrible, don't ever do that to your car, please. It's got throttle. Gav is open. Choke. It's smoking more out of the carburetor than it is the, ooh, is the exhaust plug. Oh yeah, rust just poured out of that thing. Look at all this that came out of just the inlet of that muffler. Oh, wow. Huh. This hopefully should be it. More throttle. I gotta get this combination right. Oh. I don't think there's any compression left in this thing. 
think that might be the starter smoking. Working down the list here, we've got sparkles, we've got fuel. The last thing is compression. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a compression test on this and just see where we're at and potentially put some oil in there. Who knows, there may not be enough, you know, to make combustion. 32 pounds of compression. That's not good. Number two is dead, completely. Number three, 32 and a half. Number four, 1 pound? No, that's zero. So that's fine. It'll probably come back around again. No. No, not at all. Okay. All right. There's, we got oil. Wow. Well, that one's stuck. It's not coming down. Oh, right in the center of the kneecap. That's my favorite. Well, the exhaust valve on two and four are stuck, as you can see. So I'm gonna do the right thing and just stick various objects down the sparkulator hole and just spray as much goop of any sort of chemical I can find that says lubricant or rust killer or penetrant or don't drink. Looks like we're pulling a motor. Ba -ba -da -da -boo. Losing light here pretty quick. So I think what I'm gonna do is there's plenty of room in the old service shop. I'm gonna get this inside, get some better light on it, and introduce to you a friend, my secret weapon. We could tear into this thing a little bit better. So on the Vice Grip Garage YouTube channel, I got an old Model A that was sitting forever, got it running, and I drove it home 700 miles, and my good friend Paul Shin here was a big part of that success. He is a Model A genius. So when I called him when I was looking at this one, he told me a couple words, what were they? I said, don't buy it. Pretty much flat out, don't buy it. So not only did I buy it, but then I talked him into coming out to help me with this thing. So where we're at, Paul, is we've got ignition, spark, much thanks to your distributor that you rebuilt for me, but we've got two stuck valves in this thing. So where are we at? It's definitely time to pull the head. Play some whack-a-mole with some valves? Yep. All right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna shove a bunch of rope down in the cylinders. So I've got number one and number four all the way down. Number two and three are at top dead center. And then we're gonna hit the starter and the head's gonna bounce right off. Or break. <laughs> Whichever. This is better than my option, which involved a really big torch and hammer, so. Am I doing the cranking? Yeah, I mean, you're standing there, so might as well. It's your car. How long do I just tell it? It'll, pop? it'll just pop right up. I'll be dipped. This is the oddest head removal I've ever seen in my life, but I'm enjoying it. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, she's a little carboned up there, Derek. Oh, it's kind of like Play-Doh, actually. Someone got a Ziploc bag, I could... We're gonna need a lot more brake cleaner. Oh, yeah. There's an open valve, there's an open valve. Right now, this should be down. Okay. So. Oh, it's moving. That didn't take much force at all. There it goes. That was it? Wow. Should we just spin it again and see if they bounce? Yep. Boom. Boom! Paul, this might run. Yep, it'll run like this. Oh, looks even worse. Good. For tonight, I'm gonna go ahead and soak this down, make sure that those rings, well, give them the best chance possible. What a tremendous day, wrenching. I think we're in a really good position tomorrow. Get everything reassembled and hear this car run for the first time in 397 million years. I don't know. It's a lot. See you bright and early tomorrow. Day two of our Model A build. Where do we start today? 
Uh, I think it's time to start with this. Let's fuel. get the soup out of the fuel tank. Great. I'll find a vacuum. Better be a strong one. Nothing sketchy about this at all. Oh, that smell. Yeah. Real that good. Smell. Oh. oh. Wow. Oh. That's horrendous. It's like deck stain. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's plugged completely oh. solid. Oh, that smells even better on this end. It's like burnt cat toes. Okay, we need some liquids to pour in there. Most of it's just going into my retinas. So, you know, just, just safety squint. Just keep doing it, you know. So Paul has successfully vacuumed. Now what we're gonna do is dump some fuel into the tank. He's gonna dance on the car, shake it up a little bit. We're gonna screen that, refill the jug, however long it takes to tell the stuff coming out of the tank might be flammable and not plug the shutoff valve or the filter. One bedside pan. <laughs> that's a cigarette. That, that's a hand rolled cigarette. <laughs> I'm higher than Willie Nelson skydiving right now. I wonder what Ellen Jackson's doing today. Probably something similar. Yeah. yeah, see, there's like a baffle. That's what all the chunks are from, is the baffles. I mean, it looks like the bow of the Titanic. I think we're fine. So it's finally time to move on to bolting parts back on this thing. I'm gonna start by cleaning up this head right here get the head gasket out and ready, get this back on, then we'll move on to all the other stuff. Oh, it's pudding. Okay, great. Probably not supposed to be that dark. So while Paul's tearing into the oil pan, I talked him into the dirty gob, you know? I'm gonna go ahead and take the wheel off, take the spindle off, inspect the brakes. Ooh, those have been Craigslist rebuilt. Oh, brand new shoe pads. That's great news. We're halfway there now. So this car actually has mechanical brakes, which is really nice. It actually runs on these rods. So when you hit the brake pedal, they all run on levers, essentially, all four tires. So we don't have any wheel cylinders or master cylinders or brake lines to replace. Finally, finally. It's great news. See how much sludge is in the bottom of this. Look at the wear on it. That's fantastic. It's a Model A. It's not a Formula One car. Massive reassembly time. Let's do it. Can I borrow one of your fingers, please? Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, thank you. One, two, three. Nice. Awesome. This is cleaner than my grandma's driving record over here. Yeah, so uh, since we're so far into this engine, I'm just, you know, finished rebuilding this here. This is a terrible color, but it's the closest we can get to the original old school blue Ford, which isn't on the shelf, you know, at your typical parts store, so. Better than John Deere Green. Getting ready to do a compression test on this engine again. Well, we've cleaned everything up. We've got the valves unstuck. We cleaned the cylinders. We've dropped the pan, cleaned everything out there. We've got new gaskets all the way around. The goal is hopefully we're gonna be hitting around 45 pounds of pressure. We'll see what happens here. Paul's gonna jump the starter for me. Ready? Okay. Okay. We've got almost 45. Right on. Imagine how many Fords drove out of that building. Oh, man. 
No, we just did too. <laughs> this is a blast. He was like this all day long. Yes. Second gear. Smooth. Dude, a little, little advanced. Oh. That was a little rough. <laughs> the Corvette suspension isn't yes, quite broken right. yet. Thermometer. Already getting hot. Yeah. I also can't see anything above the hood because of how tall I am. I have to drive like lurch, like <laughs> or Bowser in a go kart. Bungo drive car now. Yeah. Good job on the brakes. That's the most important part. I can't believe the amp gauge works. It's charging. <laughs> it's incredible. The radiator overflow. We gotta get, get some wind in this thing. Yeah, it's getting hot. They're not made for this. Boat Town Museum. We're definitely in Detroit. First paved road, first stoplight. Yeah. Which is really a guy in a crow's nest. And a whistle. <laughs> what a job. Man, this is incredible.